Hey everyone, welcome to a very special new feature on Group Text. I am partnering with my friend David Yunte from the amazing Behind the Velvet Rope. And we're going to get together once a month and discuss everything reality television because let's be honest. We're both junkies, and we love breaking it down and gossiping about it. Right, David? I mean, this is way overdue, Melissa. I mean, what oh. has taken us this long? Oh, life. Life. Sometimes it, sometimes it interferes with reality television. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Okay, let's just start with, I watched the Randall Scandal documentary last night that you are in. By the way, looking very handsome. Let's Ever? just get that out of the way. I mean, thank you. I, I will take it. I, I, yes, sure. Thank you. Okay. So people, it's on Hulu. It was based on this LA Times article. Explain to all of us, because you're in the doc, about what this is about. Because it's a big story. It started with an LA Times article. You know, and even the LA Times said in the documentary, you know, like they were looking for one little thing. And then, you know, you start to discover, you know, Randall, like he's this huge, you know, movie producer that there's unpaid bills. And then, you know, you start to get into like how he's treating assistants, which isn't really appropriate, you know, and then there's women and, you know, he has this past and he's in this relationship with Lala and, you know, the same thing happened with his first wife. So it was just like a true, I think when the LA Times really started looking into this, it wasn't supposed to be this huge scandal scandal. It wasn't supposed to be the, the Randall scandal. It was supposed to be just a little story about like a movie producer gone wrong, but they found all of this. And the fact that I mean, he was on Vanderpump Rules, let's just add, you know, a t like a cherry on top, right? I agree. There, okay, here was my problem with it. He's not the only scummy movie producer out there. Like, I know people who have done far worse than what he's... There is a very famous producer who was notorious for actually picking up his desk and hurling it across a room at assistants. <laughs> so that's where it... It didn't lose me because it's about a reality television pers personality. He's just like every other scummy producer. It's so funny you say that. So many of my friends, that was their exact reaction. They call me and they're like, this, what? So, I mean, this is what is being an assistant. Like, this is, that's the experience. Not to say it's okay, but like, it is the experience of being an assistant in Hollywood, right? That, I, that, yes, finding the drugs, yes. The forcing them to put everything on their credit card was a little over the top because usually the assistant has a copy of their credit card, their credit card number, or a company card. Yeah. So that, okay, that did, that was shitty. And then not paying back was shitty, but that's where I'm just like, so what? I mean- it was interesting to me that the LA Times had done a story that it had reached that level. And this was pre Sandoval scandal or Scandoval or whatever we're calling it now. But, and the other big revelation in it, which no one's talking about, was the experience of being on set with Bruce Willis before he was diagnosed and everybody knew something was wrong. Yeah, and I had known that just from being in this documentary, but I kind of found that to be some, that's where it's almost like I do feel they spent too much time on the assistant abuse, so to speak, as opposed to some of these other, because I mean, then that's a real thing. But I, I found the Bruce Willis stuff rather interesting too, especially like with the, the woman who was then turned into the waitress. I was like, wow, I didn't realize. I mean, I heard grumblings, but I didn't realize it was this bad. And a lot of the writer stuff is why the writers are on strike right now. Exactly. Which, again, it's a lot of what's going on now, sort of almost with a hindsight of what that was, also post Scandaval. I just find it like that do not use that thing that where, you know, he wasn't paying the writers and they issued that do not use. And she said it's a really strict standard. I mean, I just wonder, like, is Randall working? Like, is anyone working with him now? 
I, I, I wonder. I want to know how he could afford to have so it, much space in a building that they get the outside billboard, the outside uh, uh, naming. Yeah. Because that means you are probably the biggest tenant of that building. And what I, again, how did people not check? How were there not credit checks before moving into a building and putting their branding on it? Do they own the building? This is why you're a producer. <laughs> you, I mean, that wouldn't have even, but it's a valid point, you know? And where's the partner? Where's the producing partner in all of this? That's my question. He's like tapped out, like no one's talking about him. I think that's because of the reality television uh, component. And, and I never, until I was involved in this documentary, I never realized his films had this geezer teaser thing where, I mean, it's kind of a brilliant idea where you go in and get these huge accent stars and then you still pay them $2 million so they win because it's still for two days of work. And I mean, his films, I believe, are huge overseas. I think that's how they made the majority of their money too. But okay, so but let's trans to, uh, transition though to talk about Vanderpump because there is a lot going on. So I again, I I feel badly for Lala, but I don't have a ton of sympathy. She's too much of a Hollywood insider and knowledgeable to have not picked up on cues that things were not good. She had to see the assistants being abused. What I think she has some culpability in that. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. And, you know, a lot of people who have called me in the past 24 hours feel, you know, you stayed when the money, you know, when there was a car there and things were coming to you. And then when you saw the writing on the wall, I mean, granted, she did see the pictures in Tennessee and that's really why she left. But I mean, I guess one could argue that you also saw the world crashing down on this man. But more than that, you can't not realize how he's treating the assistants because you have a firsthand, uh, you know, a front row seat to it. And that makes me wonder if she thinks that kind of behavior towards assistants is okay. Because you know, you know how the other people are treating their people which I don't think casts her in a really good light. Well, you are not the only one that feels this way. Yeah, it's more than just the world crashing in around her. She had to be there when he was on the phone screaming and abusing assistants. And even this season on Vanderpump Rules, when it's brought up, people have that reaction of like, it's convenient to talk. Well, I mean, there even was that scene where that one guy was talking and he gave that example of like he needed his Adderall in the elevator and Randall was like going off on him and Lala was standing there. So, yeah, I'm imagining that he didn't just do this all in a vacuum. So let's move to Vanderpump Rules finale. Oh, do bring us up to speed because, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, is there a lot to discuss. I mean, listen, Lisa Vanderpump, Bravo, everyone involved. I mean, almost 2 million people watch this. Like, that is just, those numbers are crazy for Bravo these days. I mean, look, I don't think we really found out anything, but, you know, it was filmed after they picked cameras back up. Like, how many times in, like, Bravo history have they, like, I mean, hardly ever. They stopped filming, and at least they were smart enough to say, this can't wait till next season, and they pick cameras back up, but... It's just, you know, there is that one scene where Tom is crying in Lisa Vanderpump's house where he's, you know, just, ugh, there's so much cringy about it. There's so much cringy about it. But the fact that, I mean, him and Raquel have broken up in real life. I mean, they've, which I went to see Tom Sandoval and the most extras in New York City like a few weeks ago. But oh, we wait, stop. What do you mean you went to go see him? Well, he's doing his mini tour. So I said to these two friends, we're going to go. Now, my friends went kicking. They were like, now, mind you, ABC News is outside this venue. And my friends were like, if that news camera points anywhere near us, 
we will actually murder you. Like, we do not want anyone to know we are here. We do not want to be here. I'm like, well, I didn't drag you to be here. You kind of want to see what's <laughs> going to happen behind these walls. So, like, let's not protest too much. And listen, it was, we all, they they walked out like, oh, my God. Like, it, it's a cover band. So, you would, it's all songs from, like, the 80s and 90s. Like, you would be like, wow, what a lovely night out. Except that. Except, well, I mean, listen, but he, all this stuff you see online about people booing and chanting Ariana and holding up signs, none of that happened at our show. And by the way, I went because I said, what a nice night out. There'll be 10 people there. We could chill. It was really crowded. Like, I I wish there were 10 people there, Melissa, because I wanted to just (laughs) kick back and just be like, you know, I, we could have the whole place. No, it was really crowded. I'm like, I didn't realize we were signing up for like an actual concert tonight. One thing you did tell me was the fact that this may have saved Vanderpump Rules because the ratings were very low. The show was on life support. And suddenly these two huge things come out. And then the ratings were so big for the finale and the the reunion. Has it saved the show? Yeah. I mean, it's, listen, yes and no. I mean, it's coming back. It's definitely green lit for season 11. Which but, is crazy. Which is crazy. But, you know, Ariana has, first of all, I am blown away by Ariana's recent press tour. Like, she's on the view in the middle seat and the whole background says Ariana Maddox and it's Vanderpump Colors. And she's really well-spoken during all of these. I actually think she's going to leave the show. That's my prediction. But she said, I'm willing to come back, but I will not film or really work with Tom and Raquel. I mean, Raquel, I think, is just a byproduct in all of this because, I mean, I think they'll just say, great, we'll get rid of her. But, I mean, they're not going to get rid of Tom. So I don't know how... I mean, it has saved the show, but I don't know how this is going to work now. It's on pause for a minute to figure this out. And she's going to be on Dancing with the Stars. She's going to be on Dancing with the Stars, which let me tell you something. I said it on my podcast first. I said it, I think, the last time I was here with you. I truly feel that I deserve a 10% fee from ABC. I am not even joking. I'm oh, not I sure. agree. I'm not sure I this agree. was a th- It was like a day later after this was on my podcast and it went all over. And then I said it with you. It was announced. I'm like, do I get any money from this? Well, you should charge her because you basically agented the deal. I think so. For real. I I agree. See, I think they can't get rid of Raquel because we want to know. I could see them making it that they can't work together, but there's no way they can jettison her right now. And, I mean, you have like a friends thing going on, like where all the friends band together and they all wanted a million dollars. I mean, the whole cast, except for, I guess, Lisa Vanderpump and Raquel, are saying they will not film a Tom. So like Sheena, Lala, I mean, I guess Tom Schwartz, his friend will film with him. But I don't know. I mean, they have a real problem. Like they actually really don't know what to do. So I don't know how that's going to be solved in three months, five months, two months. And are they going to keep, are they going to flat go back to Randall? I have a feeling they want nothing to do with Randall or that well, story. As a producer, that there is so much gold there that I'm jealous. Like, the show writes itself. It always has. Like, what I said in the documentary, I stand behind. Like, it really was the best show on Bravo. For so, It's like it writes itself. Like, you couldn't make this up if you tried. Like, the show is on life support. They had two horrible seasons, and then this happens. And like a list, like they're asking Jennifer Lopez on the view when she was on what she thinks about Scandal, and she had an answer, which is hilarious. But Crazy. another, okay, another show that's doing something slightly different, which is Housewives, and they're doing this. They've rebranded Girls Trip to Legacy. Do we think they're fooling anyone? It's the same idea as Girls Trip, but it's just bringing back cast members. I think people are more excited to see that from the old OGs. I mean, the OGs basically of New York than they are this re- this New York reboot with all new people. Okay, talk to me about Jenna Lyons. So for people who don't know who Jenna Lyons is, 
She's a designer who brought back J. Crew from the dead. She changed their whole image. She changed their whole aesthetic, yet still staying in the same lane. She's gay. And why would... Okay, I have my theory why Jenna Lyons would join the show. I want to hear yours. Do you know her, like, from your fashion no, police, fashion I New York days now? I don't know her, but you're in New York, and you said, like, the 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 fashion world is buzzing that she's doing this. Every fashion person I had on my podcast after she was announced, I would ask, and they were like, wait, what? Like, they didn't really know because it was just announced, and I'm like, no, she's... And they were like, that's so weird. <laughs> or <laughs> like... or the, 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 the consensus I got from all these people that knew her were like, she's not, like, down in the mud like that. Like, she's serious. She, so I'm like, listen, that's not really a great recipe for what we want in our housewife that everyone's so shocked and they don't see her like going to the mat, right? I'm sure that makes her a smarter businesswoman than lots of the housewives, but is that what people want in their housewives? I wonder why they chose her. I think it's a very interesting choice. I think it's going to be however however open she chooses to be it's going to have a ripple effect in the fashion industry because are the general public really going to get to see what goes on or i think she's about to launch her own brand you do and this is the platform where they're going to premiere the brand and and set up the brand that's what i think i think this is a full on business move I would not be surprised if she only cares if it's one season. Well, just like me with Ariana, we're going to mark Melissa Rivers' words that if there's a <laughs> Jenna Lyons brand, <laughs> we're going to see what date and time this is. This is going to be you're going to have predicted it because I never even thought of that. But that makes sense, right? Like she might be from the Bethany Frankel school of just like, it's such a good platform. And really, I mean, in no disrespect, but like, what was Jenna Lyons doing before this? I mean, I know she was the president of J. Crew, and looking at her Instagram, all I know is she is an unboxer. We all know how we get all the swag. Her whole Instagram is like, and great, I wish, you know, she has a gazillion boxes. She unboxes everything and looks all high end. So that's a nice life to just get all that all day. But what was she doing before this? I, I'm not sure, right? Do you, do you get anything? I do. I get plenty, but not. What do you get? Well, I mean, where I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking over at a table to see, and I'm the worst. I am the, I'm like, send me, I get like some vodka, like vodka in a can, which is one of my sponsors, Nebula Nine. It's really good vodka in a can. Lots of skin. Va vodka can. in a can is a little alarming, but we'll get back to that. It's, it's <laughs> two shots per, you just open it, you drink it. It's actually really good. But I mean, but she, I mean, I get like some, I get a lot of like skincare stuff, which that stuff I use. Believe it or not, and this isn't really my wheelhouse, even though I have a lot of clients in this space, and I, I'm honest about it. Like, I, I get a lot of CBD, a lot. I don't know if no one wants to advertise CBD, but I get, and it's not, I mean, vodka's my thing. CBD is not really my thing. No judgments to anyone. I get a lot of CBD gummies. Like, when people come to visit me, I'm like, if anyone, like, I can provide gummies, wine, I'm like, I just don't use this. Like, who? Who wants to leave with this package of gummies tonight? Who, who would like to be the lucky winner? It's not my thing. I personally think that that's a wonderful gift. Um, I get, um, like, again, from my advertisers, like Jenny Kane is one of my big advertisers, and I like that I get to pick something. So my Jenny Kane wardrobe is fantastic right now. Yeah, that's um, good. But, going, but that, again, going back to Jenna Lyons. But she gets, first, like, I mean, I see her with, like, real stuff. Like not I mean, that, not that our vodka, not that my Nebula Nine and your Jenny Kane. Let's give a shout out to our wonderful sponsors. But like, I see her with like something that's like Hermes or something, and I'm like, what? Okay, you and I are in the wrong. I, 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 I know. Think, I do wonder though the Jenna Lyons and the full. Okay, what is your opinion on the full reboot of New York? Because you and I have discussed that the Housewives franchise uses the term socialite loosely. I want to see, listen, like, and I talk about this on my show all the time, like, 
there's so much fake money in housewives like this this is just i don't know why i'm so obsessed with this topic but like i like to go down and like i did a live pod like i do a live podcast shows every that's one of my biggest questions like david tell us who has real money in housewives and so i don't like all the fake money when like you're renting a house or like you're living a great life like kim and croy and then you find out you owe like two million dollars well you don't have any money if you owe two million dollars so I agree, like Beverly Hills, there's a lot of players on the Beverly Hills Housewives with real money. Why can't you do that in New York? Like, the, And I know a lot of them won't film, but I want to see the real gossip girl, like where your, your mom's apartment was, like the Upper East, like on the park, true, filthy, rich. I think that would be, I don't want to see regular people. Well, we're going to get true, filthy, rich with Jenna Lyons. She's she has that much, huh? She she is wildly successful, but like Bethany, wildly successful. Again, I don't know her bank account, but she is is wildly wildly successful. So, so that's you know, interesting to me. But yeah, where I are mean, like the society, like like the the charity events, like the woman who is like there's all these rules for the charity event, and yet she doesn't follow them, and she's so rich. They're like. You can break the rules. Like, where is that woman? Like, that's who I want on the Housewives. On Instagram or TikTok this morning, I don't know if you saw it about Kyle Richards' party that I they did in SoFi Stadium. What is that? I saw that. What is that? And Erica Jane performed. And now, by the way, Kyle is real rich. The agency, man. The agency is no joke. No joke. We, I mean, this is bigger than buying Beverly Hills on Netflix. Like, there are offices everywhere Mauricio is. He's done very well for himself. And his partners are lovely. I know one of the other families. But that was something this morning. Who it rents looks... out SoFi? Only, I mean, Kanye did that when he proposed to Kim up in Northern California. But I can't wait to see what that was because obviously they were filming. <laughs> They were filming. It was the finale. It's over. And like Denise Richards was there. Camille Grammer was there. Now, who pays for that? Listen, I highly doubt that. I mean, I don't think Bravo pays for that stuff. I really don't. Like they pay for the vacations. The people, you know, the girls go on when it's their vacation. I mean, I can't imagine how much that would be. Maybe Bravo gives you a small stipend, but I mean, I can tell you for other franchises, they definitely don't pay. I mean, I yeah. know people that have had like 50th and birthday parties and things where they, it's over the top and Bravo won't even pay for that. And it's like the New Jersey version, no offense to RHONJ. So <laughs> I can't imagine that they are just paying, it's evolution. I can't imagine they're paying for that. But someone once told me, it may have been you, that half these women go broke doing the show because the level of wealth you're supposed to display is so over the top that the wardrobes are a million dollars. Totally. So how do some of these women even afford to be on it? Especially in the beginning, you know, the first yeah. year salary is like 60. I mean, maybe it's like 80 now, but it's that. So imagine you have to do hair, makeup, wardrobe. They don't. This is why you hear of people like it's just this living is such a desire to like be on the show and then you're living above your means. It, like that's what happened to the Chrisleys and now they're both in jail. Oh, bummer. Bummer. Um, okay, you reveal, okay, we're gonna talk about my favorite Bravo show, which we all know is Below Deck, my obsession. You revealed something to me the other day. This is like when I'm out at night and I run into people on reality TV, it's like we can have a great conversation. But then when I reveal this on the air, you're the same way. It's like whatever you say in a text or a phone call to Melissa Rivers, David, will be brought out. Not true. Okay. But this particular. It's okay. no, we, you and I do talk off the record. I know. But this one you did reveal to me yesterday that you have a full on crush with Fraser. From Below Deck. Yeah. Yeah. I had him on my show and listen, I listen, I have crushes on a lot of people as they come on behind the velvet rope at times, but listen, he seems, I mean, I don't see a boyfriend there. First of all, I like that. You don't really know. I mean, is he, he's, he's kind of like mysterious. He's not the type to put his stuff out there. And then 
I personally think that he is a trust fund child. I've decided he is always like I'm in Switzerland at the Ritz and now I'm in Aspen and I'm not, you know, I don't know what chief stews get paid these days, but I'm just, and I'm not saying you need to be a trust fund, but it doesn't hurt. And not saying that's <laughs> not. So I'm just so intrigued. I mean, he's also cute and he's nice. And yeah, I have a full on crush, he's, Melissa. Yeah, but he's very tightly wound. I'm like, okay with that. I mean, I'm a little, I'm like a little, I'm like a little bit of an A-type personality, especially when it comes- A little? Okay, well, I am. And especially with work, and I feel like there's a proper way to do things, and there's an improper way to do things, and I'm okay. Listen, I find that two tightly wine personalities, either it's perfect, or yes, you literally want to kill yourself. You know what the problem is? I say that I want someone laid back, and then you meet someone laid back. And then it's like, do you ever, do you have, then you have to do everything. Like, where do you want to go to dinner? Where do you, I'm like, oh my God, like, I just don't want to think. So sometimes when someone has a tightly wound personality, they'll say, be here, shut up, do this. And you're like, thank you. This is perfect. See? I always want someone who can deal with shit at the airport. So I don't have to be the one, you know, finding out, like, I, I you know, go up to the desk and ask how much longer did it, like, I need someone to be able to do that because- it would just be so nice. See? Now, if you had someone really quiet and not tightly wound, they would never approach a desk. They would be afraid. I think you and I need to be married. But let's go back to besides. Melissa, uh, any day that you want to be married, I told you, I have a Hamptons house. Here you go. I'll, I have the L.A. house. I was just going to say, I'm going to give up my apartment in L.A. I'll come move there. And you do what you want when, when you want it. Oh, God, it sounds too perfect. Okay, let's go back to below deck. Okay. Lots of changes. The retirement of Captain Lee. And they are keeping it very under wraps who they're going to replace him with. We know it's not Captain Sandy because she still has her own show. Who do we think it's going to be? Are we, are we are they going to bring in someone completely new? I wouldn't mind someone completely new. You I, know, or you have to look at like a really senior bosun, right? Well, you'd move actually up a first officer because from bosun, you go to first officer. This is why below deck is your favorite. I don't even know the right. So who's a first officer in the below deck franchise? Like I know Malia, right? Wasn't Malia a bosun? Isn't she or she the now that she's like the first officer? Malia, I think, became a first officer. And most of these bosuns and first officers are getting their licenses for the bigger boats i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if malia already has the qualifications i and i'm a malia fan i personally think she's too young you know who i thought would have been great but i believe because of his exit and there was there was season where there were like racial claims and now i think bravo is done with him is eddie yes Eddie, Eddie would be great, but you know, Eddie with the cheating and then the lying, it's become a whole, whole thing. There is a new sex symbol. Now that we've lost Lee as stud of the sea, there's Captain Jason on Australia. Now, have you seen him? I have seen him. Now I prefer Frazier, but I am, have no problem with Captain Jason. I think you don't have a problem with Captain Jason. Not at all. Not at all. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Captain Jason. But I just think it's sad that we're losing Captain Lee. And someone said to me, oh, they pushed him out because of his age. I'm like, the man has health issues. It's a safety thing. And he knows that. He's too experienced to not understand that. Yeah. I mean, I think so. He's he's done really right like not even below deck like i think he's just done at the sea he's been doing speaking engagements like some of those like let's sell tickets for the bravo fans i think he did a few of those in florida well daisy from sailing yacht is now doing these seminars on how to be a stew which i think is fan i i just love that because daisy's great but daisy had to put out a post say after the last two episodes ago that she was fine because she had a meltdown what did she have a meltdown over? See, I'm going to start watching Below Deck again because of you after we spoke yesterday. Yeah. Um, pressure. 
just pressure. There is so much pressure. And Daisy doesn't crack. And Daisy cracked. Not, I mean, not horribly, but it was all just getting to her. And the show is so popular, she had to put something out on uh, Instagram and all those saying, hey, pressure got to me. It's you gotta know, it be happens. hard. It's really, it's gotta be a hard job in general. And then to be filming a show has to be difficult. I think it's one of the probably the hardest Bravo shows to film beyond. I mean, because you are at sea. Like it's no joke. No, and they're all living on top of each other. Are you a sea person? See, I'm not a sea person. Like I don't oh, yeah. I, you are. Like you like a nice yacht vacation. Who doesn't? I'd rather go. What, to- if you got if you got to go on a super yacht, would you say no? I would not say no, but I would rather do the equivalent of that at like, you know, at a remote island somewhere where we're on land. Five star well, resort, but not at sea. Well, since neither of us have that opportunity being invited to either of those things right now. Um, but I had the good fortune of interviewing Captain Sandy and her wife Leah. And she asked me if I would ever consider doing the show. And I had to be honest and say no because I, my family used to charter a yacht for many, many years, and I have wonderful memories of it. First of all, you do five to seven days. And my family and my friends, we would be so boring because when we go on vacation, basically the first three days, all we do is sleep. And, like, read and, like, crawl from, like, the hotel room to the pool or the beach, eat something, crawl back. At 3 o'clock, I'm asleep in the room until dinner. That does not make for good reality TV. Did you tell her this? And what did she Uh say that? She was like, She said, well, that wouldn't work. I'm like, yeah, I know. (laughs) Maybe you could find some friends that will be more of the, you know, and listen, you Captain Sandy, they can comp you, but you know, in general, they you have to pay for this vacation. You have to you have to pay half of the normal charter fee, which I've looked up on those boats is one hundred fifty thousand plus a yeah. week. Plus, you got now. We all know you got to give somewhere <laughs> between seventeen and twenty three thousand as the tip, or they talk about how much they hate you. I mean, and then you're cheap on that. And I think even if they waive the fee, because, you know, Jill Zarin, I mean, I think I can reveal this. I don't know, but I'm going to reveal it. Jill Zarin's on the new sh- the new episode, the new season of, I think, Below Deck. It's either that or Mediterranean. I'm not sure which one, but she already filmed it. I think even if they comp everything, I, this tip you absolutely have to leave on your own. So worst case, you got to leave the tip. 20. And if you're a public personality. People are watching, honey. People are watching and are going to say, oh, how did they do it? But I, we would be so boring. Now, another thing, because I'm the below deck expert and get to show off to you, Chef Ben got engaged. Who is, who, to who? His girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> now, and he, now they all, and they were joking when they said that he was the father of Kate Chastain's baby, just because they looked. I know that he's not. But Kate admits that she's not revealing who the father is. Now, they're really good friends, so there is the possibility maybe he was the sperm donor. But I also do think that it it, it keeps interest in them because Ben now is like a big caterer, private chef. You can hire him to do things like that I would do. Like, I want to have the Chef Ben experience. But he got engaged, and he was, like, hooking up with everybody. Everyone gets tamed at some point, more or less. <laughs> I mean, if you have you the next party you have, I'm sure if you reached out to his people, he would be there. Yeah, I might just do that just to see how much it would cost. I'm really curious. Listen, until we- Okay, when are you in LA next? I'm back in June. I'm back in like two weeks. Okay, you and I are gonna, we're, I'm gonna try and see if we can pull this. We can split it. And then we can talk about it on our shows and make it tax tax deductible. I am all for this. Oh, that would be so fun. Does so he what do even we... live in LA or he lives in Florida? I'm just making he that. He lives in Florida. Okay. So he'll have to. And you, and you probably have to fly him out first class. 
I was going to say, we'll have to fly him out. I didn't know first class, but maybe. Yeah, you're right. Do you think Chef Ben is going to fly anything but first class, if not (laughs) private? Because remember, he comes from a very fancy family from England. He talked about that he played football, soccer to us, with William and Harry. See, now, between him and Frazier, I think there's a lot of, like, trust fund types that go into yachting, which I'm that shocks me. I wouldn't, that doesn't make sense to me, per se. Well, if you're passionate about what you do and being a chef and separating from your family, like with Ben, and he talks about that because there was an episode a few seasons back where he was very insulted by another stew who was also English and kept call- saying that he was a snob. And she didn't like him because of the area he was from and because of what his family did. And that was a very interesting dynamic to watch Ben have to get really defensive about who he was in his personal life because he had never realized, he had never talked about his family and where he came from. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. You need to catch up, dude. You need to catch up. After our call yesterday, I'm I'm like, I got to get, I was so religious on the below deck front and it just fell off at some point. But you have motivated me. And you've motivated me about Vanderpump. You just start next season when it comes back, whenever that is, and just start from the first episode and it ain't so going should, nowhere. So I should go season one, episode one, or can I skip all that? I would do season one, episode one. Those were the heydays. Now, a, a lot of them are not there anymore. I mean. So? I'm not on, we don't have Fashion Police anymore and people still ask me, how's the show? Then that, there you go. Then I would start season one, episode one. Those are the classic years. The classics. Being the below deck junkie, I could not believe that you shared information with me that I didn't know about uh, deckhand Bruno. Bruno Duarte, yep. Do tell. I mean, from below deck to, like, leading, busy, working gay porn star. You know, it was always, like, when he left, it's one of these things that just shows you the development of the world. Like, when he left below deck, I remember there were, like, grumblings of this, and it was, like, a scandal, and, like, he tried to keep it quiet, I think with OnlyFans, where it is and like where, you know, the world has changed since Bruno is on um, Below Deck. Oh, he has leaned into it. It's like his entire Instagram is, and he has, I don't know if they're officially married. I think they are. He has a serious boyfriend, husband, who is also in porn. And Bruno is just, he's literally stalking. He's going to come back on my podcast. He's reached out and is like, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I find it because at first you're like, well, what's the angle? And I'm like, I find it interesting, like, deckhand to, like, I want to know, like, you're like, you want to know with Chef Ben, how much do you make on OnlyFans? Like, is it, because I talked to a school teacher I have coming up. She worked for a school. The school had, it found out she was on OnlyFans, had a lot of issues, shamed her, and she quit. And she literally makes over a million dollars a year now on OnlyFans. So I just find, I I find these stories interesting. Maybe I'm just obsessed with money because here we go back to money again. I just want to know from Bruno, like, how did this happen? How much do you make? Tell me about the life of a porn star. I I can't believe you (laughs) say this, what I just thought of. From deck hand to dick in hand. (laughs) It could be the story of, that could be the title of his autobiography. Or like the next porno that he's in. That he could be the star. And that's like, that's actually perfect. Isn't that good? Well, you are a producer, Melissa. Maybe, you know. There you go. But okay, but we also have to, you gotta, we gotta put up somewhere what his Instagram is. So that people can go and check it out. And I will share pictures. And trust me, it's like, you know, it's Instagram. Everything is clothed, but there's no shirts anywhere. And he's like. He has leaned into it. I'm like, okay, well, this is at least better than this strange in-between phase when you weren't on the show anymore and you were trying to deny you were really doing this and it's we're way past that now. <gasps> what if he came back on as a client? That would be great. That would be amazing. I need to go work for Bravo. You really, I mean, so like- I maybe- really do. <laughs> that would be great. I don't think he would be sleeping all day in, or in the bed at three o'clock. Yeah, well, you know, to each his own. That would be great. I'm all for it. 
David, I can't wait till we do our little catch up again. We have, listen, we're going to have, there's so much going on, Melissa. We're going to have so much to talk about. So much. Okay. I love you so much. Thank you. This has been great. The, the group text behind the velvet rope. Crossover. Monthly roundup of everything reality. I love it. Until, until next month. Yes. Yes. Hopefully we can do it in person in June. I'll be there. Fantastic. Bye.